Yeah, this face is sort of, I try to make it look a little nicer and cleaner, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like when company's coming. Yeah, I was like, oh, tidy up this pile up over here. <laughs> but I'm a very messy painter, so it only gets so clean. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have paint on my hands today. That's well, that's probably, good. that's good, right? It's good. It doesn't happen <laughs> usually. Yeah, I try to make it like hopefully a quiet day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's I think 14 artists in here, so. So there's always you never there's know. always somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Would you mind starting off with who you are and yeah. what you do? Do I look? Yeah, that's kind of the internet this out one? there. Okay. Uh, if you want to talk to them, if you want to ignore them, <laughs> this, you, just, you just talk right here and... Uh, I'll introduce gonna... myself okay. to the internet. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Hi. Uh, my name is Julie Vornholt. I am an oil painter making the transition into full-time painter. And um, just, I like to paint. <laughs> That's good. I just paint a lot. I paint a lot. <laughs> I <just> paint a lot. <laughs> you mentioned you're making the transition from uh, artist to artist full time. Yes. Yeah. Uh, when did that transition start? That started once I got this studio space in. I think I moved in here last October. Mm -hmm. It's hard to spend all my time painting when I don't have anywhere to paint. Mm -hmm. So I got this studio October, and then I have a couple like part time jobs that I'm trying to like less and less so yep. I can be here all like kind of my nine to five is mm -hmm. in here so it's like a like a transition from one thing to the next and I, I think of like the Indiana Jones scene where he's taking the idol out and putting <laughs> yeah, the yeah. <laughs> putting the yeah, sand in he's like just the right amount <laughs> yeah yeah and that's that moment that moment of transition where you flip over that's mm -hmm. something that's always interested me and the more people I talk to they think about that too they're like when do I pull the trigger? When do yes. I, yeah? Have you figured that um, out? Like when I pull the trigger to do this full time. Commit? Yeah. Yeah. It was um. So I'm from Indiana originally, but I moved a lot. Um, this summer I was in Denver, and I didn't have a studio, and so I was just working. I wasn't painting and working, and then we moved back. We moved to Madison, my husband and I, and I wasn't painting, and I hated it. I'm just miserable not painting. Mm. Like, I can tell, like, my, what's the word, presence, I guess. Okay. Like, I just, I felt different. So, we talked when we moved here. I was going to get a studio, um, keep a couple part-time freelance jobs, but I had to, if I was going to do it, it was like now or never, because mm -hmm. we just moved, a fresh start. So, I got a studio, and I come here every day, usually. And I'm trying to make money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's like, like the, the plight of the artist, right? Mm, yeah. Yeah, and and there is something to committing. Uh, you know, I found that the more I commit on something, the more things just kind of bubble up out of the woodwork. Mm -hmm. uh, have you experienced that at all? It's mostly been committing to being in the studio and being here when I'm like going to work and not actively making money. Mm -hmm. Has that's been difficult and then like buying supplies and all stuff like that like I needed a new easel and it's not cheap so you have to like invest all this money okay. to make money and you're not guaranteed to make anything yeah you know like I could paint all day and it okay. I'm not gonna sell anything unless someone loves what I'm doing yeah and can afford it yeah um, <laughs> so. I think a lot of people who uh, who are artists I, my gut says that most of them love creating the art uh, and don't love s the process of selling the oh, art or like yeah yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah. yeah all right <laughs> you're in that camp yes. yeah okay yeah that's um like i realized about being an artist is a lot of us are more introverted mm -hmm. um not ever, obviously so but to make it and to make money you have to self-promote and you have to network and you like have to talk to people yeah when I just hate that part of it. Yeah. Like, this is great. Yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> Present company excluded. Of yeah, course. yeah, of course. Yeah. Just the <laughs> talking yeah. about yourself and having to meet people and network is hard. But without that, if I just paint, it's not going to yeah. go anywhere. Yeah. It would just be more of a hobby at that point. Have you found that there's certain things that you do that have worked well for you? As like, far as you mentioned that going out and talking to people or. Yeah, I'm still not great at talking to people. Okay. Yeah, I'm. Um, okay. That's why I like 
the internet mm -hmm. and I like okay. social media. Um, I really like writing. Like I'm a very, like I wanted to be an English major, but I, I did art instead. Uh, so I like writing artist statements. If I can just like hand everybody a little piece of paper with my statement and just say, read this, right. that would be ideal. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Here, you're good. This is yeah, it, this read. Is, yeah. <laughs> That's all you need to know. Um, yeah, I feel like I convey what I'm trying to get across through paintings and words. Yeah. Written words. Yeah, that's, that's kind of an uphill battle sometimes yes. if, if your wheelhouse is in the painting, to, but to like share the painting and sell the painting, you have to go and do these other things. Yeah. There, there's a little bit of, like for me in my experience, I've experienced that and I found that I have had self, 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 <laughs> self growth so, in those, yeah. in those areas, like where I have to meet strangers and talk mm -hmm. to people like those things may be a little bit more difficult for an introvert like for me it's been the opposite yeah, for me yeah, it's been yeah. writing a blog post and I'm like oh what words do I want to use and it takes me a day see and I love that I would blog all day yeah. but I thought it was gonna help yeah yeah. <laughs> um, and, yeah and have you had any any luck with with online sales yes I have um I so I sold over Instagram which has been pretty cool mm -hmm. I'll just like post whatever, say for sale, people will inquire, and I've sold a couple of strangers. That's cool. So that is cool. The first stranger sale is a good deal. That's a good deal. Yeah, it's like, like not my mom buying something. Yeah, yeah, finally. exactly. <laughs> it's so nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's been good. Um, I don't, I just started Etsy doing like custom mm -hmm. little paintings, which, oh, it's all boxed up. I had okay. a couple I just finished I'm going to ship today. Okay. So Etsy's been good so far for little stuff. Um, but selling these bigger ones is yeah, harder. Yeah. 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 They have to find the right home, the right yeah. place. And yeah, it's that balance of figuring out, I have to find the one person that loves my work and can afford it. Mm -hmm. it's, sometimes you can afford it and you don't like what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Or you love it, but like me, like I couldn't afford certain artworks if I really love them. So I have to find that like, yeah. perfect person. Yeah, and, and a lot of artists, they... They have a lot of big paintings. Yes, I love and, painting big. Right? And it's harder to sell. Like. Right. They're, they're, they're bigger. They're more expensive. They're, there's more paint on them. It takes more time. That Just everything grows. And do you think the smaller pieces can help shoehorn customers up the ladder? That's what I'm trying. That's why I doing like murals and I did like theater set painting like I love painting huge mm -hmm. and so like some of these bigger ones like that's not big enough I want really big yeah and I started a couple big ones and realized these are really hard to sell so yeah. I'm trying to do small little to kind of have a price point mm -hmm. and then hopefully like hook a couple people to what I'm doing yeah, and yeah. kind of follow along maybe so I'm trying to go smaller more affordable yeah because yeah, because you can, like, uh, it's easier to, I would imagine, because I'm not an artist, but I'm guessing it's easier to start with something that's yes. small, and it's easier to price it lower. Yeah. Because there's less time involved, is that right? Is yeah, there's, um, I try not to, like, yeah. price mine by time, which everyone tells me to do, because I paint really fast. Mm -hmm. So, like, when I'm really feeling it, a big one like that right. only took maybe, right. like, six hours and then I'm doing these tiny little ones and they take so much longer because mm -hmm. I'm I'm a big stroke person mm -hmm. and so to do little is harder it takes more time but there's less paint and then the canvas costs a lot less so and I mostly just do small so other people can afford it yeah because I want people to own my work yeah they love it one way or the other yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so I try to be like conscious of where I'm pricing mm -hmm. Because a lot of, like, I have a lot of friends, like, right. they love my work, but I know they can't afford it. Mm -hmm. So I try to do, like, smaller, like, this one, or the ones behind us, too, really fast studies. And so, like, I would sell those a lot lower to, like, yeah, hit everyone's price point. How would you describe your work? Oh. Like, someone who's a... never seen it, maybe, maybe, they, maybe is this is their question. introduction to you. Yes. So everything I do is self-portrait, except for that little one. Mm -hmm. All right. That's a, a, pers a fun project. Everything's self-portrait. Um, the kind of like fundamental basis is working around mental health. That's where everything kind of stems from. Just that like, it's hard to explain. They're little 
light, but if you notice a lot of them are like covered up or mm -hmm. there's a lot of fabric. So figure and fabric is my two main things. Mm -hmm. And I like to use the fabric as, you know, going through like depression and anxiety, like you're hiding, you're covered, but some days like it's yeah. okay and you yeah. open up a little bit mm -hmm. or like being introverted. Sometimes I can open up a little and I use a lot of figures in the fabric to kind of try to convey those, but I also like to keep it really light and airy. Mm -hmm almost dreamlike which is something I'm kind of moving into tapping into like that weird airy feeling of when I do like anxiety like feeling real or feeling part of the real world is like a weird dreamy state mm. so I'm kind of figuring it all out right now <laughs> is is uh, I mean, one we're all figuring it out yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like, like, I don't know if we'll ever any of us figure it oh, out oh it's been quite a process yeah, yeah. but Two, like the the style that you're in, did you is this based on a different style that came before it? Where, kind where does of. the style come from? Um, before pretty much this collection, I don't know how much you can see. Um, everything was a lot, a lot darker color wise, a lot like bolder kind of colors. Like the paintings as a whole looked darker, and they think sort of were from an emotional place. Mm -hmm. And I remember my mom one day looking and be like, are you, I love these, but are you ever going to paint something a little more hopeful? And at the time I was like, no, like I don't feel hopeful. It's, yeah. This is what I feel. And just kind of going through life and picking up painting again after being in Colorado for a while, I started to feel kind of more open and a little lighter. And the colors just sort of turned that way. I didn't plan everything to be so light and blue and pink at all. I don't even like blue, like at all. <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of blue. There's a lot, there's of, a lot blue. of blue. Yeah. And I, that just, it just like happened one day as I was painting, everything became light. And I kind of feel like I was ready at a point in my life to like open up a little and yeah, like feel a little more hopeful. Do you, do you see your evolution as a person in your paintings? Yeah, that's why I, I kept trying to like what I want to paint and what do I want to say with my paintings yeah. and the ones where I try to force it don't come out right. Hmm. So when I just sort of let that go and said, I'm just going to paint this picture of me because I like it. Mm -hmm. And they just sort of became their own thing. Mm -hmm. So I always say like, I just paint how I feel. Mm -hmm. And... Right now, I guess I feel really light and blue and pretty. Yeah. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's awesome. That's where they're going. Yeah. A, a lot of art, I've been told, sells with the story behind the art. Yeah. Have you told, uh, how do you tell your story yeah. behind the art? I, um, first kind of thing I do is a lot with my titles. Mm -hmm. um, these titles got a little shorter. My kind of first collection where I started really getting my groove and my, like where I was going, all my titles are like things I have said in my head to myself mm -hmm. when I was going through like a really hard time. Just like, actually I actually don't remember a lot of them. Um, so I kind of try to title these the same, like this big one's called I'm Okay. Because mm -hmm. I say that all the time, like I'm okay. Mm -hmm. um, so I try to do titles and then artist statements, I keep a little more creative and shorter because mm -hmm. I like writing. So I sort of kind of write almost like what I say to myself when I'm in a bad moment or like what I would say to someone else who needs to know it's okay. Mm. So I do a lot with the writing. Um, Instagram cap posts sometimes when it's like a painting I'm like, yeah, I feel really good about. I'll give a little more like, I went through this hard time and these are some details and that's sort of why I paint what I paint. Because mm. I think it's important to talk about how you feel. Because mm. if you don't, then you're just alone in your head mm -hmm. and that sucks and, ma and maybe in your alone in your paintings and maybe yeah. people don't get your paintings then and yeah. then you're still alone yes uh, it's, <laughs> it's all kind of and it, and I try to keep them a little ambiguous content wise mm -hmm. because some if you haven't experienced depression you're not gonna get it mm -hmm. and that's okay like I'm happy you didn't experience depression that's great so if you just like at my painting look at them and they're pretty and you like them like that makes you happy. Mm -hmm. Good. I want you to have that. So it's kind of a both for everybody thing. That's great. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's great.
Yeah, uh, I think um, a lot of people who are novices to looking at art, mm -hmm. they, they see the art. Yeah. But a lot of times they don't think about the story behind it, or they don't think about yeah. like what it took to get that piece there. Yeah, and you can't always have a you know long art statement for every single piece. Mm -hmm. So that's why I try to do titles a lot. And again, like if you, it you're not getting what I'm saying, like that's okay. I just want to put beautiful things out there. Yeah. And I like to paint because I have to paint. So. Like it's it's coming out one way or the other. It is, and it, I'm just I'm grumpy when I don't paint. Yeah. Noticeably. Yeah. Th are you, yeah. If there's a period of time where you don't paint, that first painting when you come back, is, are those any different than the others? Um, I don't feel like they're different. Okay. I just sometimes like like I started this little study. I haven't painted in two weeks because I've just been busy with like a new job. Mm -hmm. And so when I don't paint for a while, I try to do warm ups, little ones like these are all warm ups, just a figure it out, like get back into it and kind of work out the grumpiness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get, get kind of your mind right yeah. for what's next. So I next. don't know if the paintings turn out different or not, but I feel better. A lot of artists, I'm sure, have, a lot of people just, you have the same experience with whatever the thing is in your mm -hmm. life that you like, and I think that artists have like another layer of expectations on them, uh, where yeah. they're like, you're, you have to sell it. Yeah. Like, you can't be a good artist until you sell it, so like everyone else can, like, Somebody who likes bowling can go bowling, and they're not told you're not yeah, a good bowler you until you make money being a bowler yeah. or bowling. You know, like, like art has that layer of like, well, fine, you're an artist, but have you sold anything? Yeah, and that's sometimes an unrealistic measure because it's it's dependent on what your goals are with the art. Yeah, right? definitely. I've I've ran into that when I. First was doing a lot of paintings, like my senior thesis and everything. Um, my price point was really low. I was in college. Silly. Mm -hmm. um, but I wasn't super concerned about making money at the time, and I had a handful of people, like especially uh, women I know, tell me like who bought some of the pieces. Like, this spoke to me. Like, this mm -hmm. meant something. Mm -hmm. And, like, that was so important to me. So... After and then I go through periods of I'm painting and I'm not selling and I get so down on myself because I didn't mm -hmm. sell anything for a while. Mm -hmm. Not making money. Mm -hmm. But then I'll post something and again I'll have people tell me like, wow, I connected with this. Yeah, you They were... didn't buy it, which is, I understand. Mm -hmm. But it kind of fed that little bit of, oh, okay, this is why I'm doing this. Yeah, your art certainly resonates with people. You know, because so. I've seen, like, on Instagram, you can see in the comments, or you can see yeah, you know, people so. interacting. Yeah, yeah, and I, I need to, when I don't tell anything, sort of bring myself back to that point. Like, it's not just about money. You're okay. Mm -hmm. This is important. So, mm -hmm. yeah, if I wanted to make money, I wouldn't do this. <laughs> I would get a different job <laughs> if yeah. that was my only goal. Yeah, there's no certainty in this, is there? Not at all. Yeah, yeah it's hard. That's why I'm trying to supplement with, like, Etsy. I'm doing, like, mm -hmm. um custom ring paintings, so like wedding rings and stuff. Mm. So I'm trying to supplement a it's, little bit. It seems that there's not, everyone thinks that, oh, to be an artist, you sell your art. That's, that's the stuff that hangs on the wall. Yeah. But there's all of this, like this, this halo around that maybe the primary medium. And there's mm -hmm. different ways that other things can bring in money where you're kind of doing the same thing, yeah, but it's a yeah. little different. So starting a couple like commissions, like some on my wall are commissions of like, um, bridal portraits and stuff mm -hmm. that are just pictures that are pretty and people want them. Mm -hmm. There's no layer of what I'm talking about. It's just, they like this painting, they want me to do it for them, and they pay me. Yeah. So, yes. <laughs> and that few hundred dollars helps support the studio, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah. So, I'll paint anything. Yeah. <laughs> Within reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and the one of those things has, uh, you said murals, you said mm -hmm. Etsy. Yeah. Uh, in small things on Instagram. Yeah. Right. And uh, portraits. Yeah. Like that's four yeah, of them right there. Uh, are there any other ones off the top of your head that, that like any other ways, works? any other ways that you incorporate your art to make money mm. to help support yourself? Um, I do a lot of like, I not a lot. I try to do some freelance like graphic design, just mm -hmm. given the, you know, kind of eye for color and studying mm -hmm. color theory and all that. Like I'm not a graphic designer. But I'll take on a couple little projects here and there of someone that, like, needs a new logo. Hmm. And I'll work with them. And I do um, just kind of that little stuff when it comes up. Um, I think a yeah. lot of people have a hard time thinking about that little stuff. 
Yeah. Like there seems to be like an aha moment that happens where the, where people say, mm-hmm. "Oh, I can I can do that too." Yes. How do you how do you get there? How do you get to that aha uh, moment? I think what I've noticed has been a lot of like my mom or family saying, "You should really do this over and over," mm-hmm. and I say, "No." I don't want to do that. I want to do this. And they keep saying, like, you could make money doing this. And I think after they kind of, like, beat it into me a couple times, mm-hmm. it sort of opens my mind of, oh, there's other outlets. There's other ways to do this other than painting my one thing I want to paint. Mm-hmm. Um, I started teaching um, after-school art classes. Oh, cool. That's another thing. I just started. Okay. So that's another little being able to, like, because I can talk about art. And I, mm-hmm. I learned about art for I feel like ever. I'm not that old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it feels like my whole life. So, yeah, being able to teach classes is sort of starting to help. Again. Okay. It just, it's, uh, oh, do you, you know, need to do? Someday when there's a budget, I feel like a, a big camera that can record <laughs> oh, an entire interview. Yeah. But until then, we use what we got. Oh, I got it. I, like, just splurged and got a new easel. I was using, nice. like, a little... Yeah. Found at Goodwill. Yeah? Yeah. Like, yeah, use what you can get. That's why everything's like on the wall. Yeah. Paint on the wall. Yeah, why not? It's so easy. <laughs> See, that's, that's another one of those mindset things, right? Yeah. Like, oh, I, I, can, I can only make money when I sell this particular type mm-hmm. of art is a mindset thing that can be changed. But hopefully you have somebody in your life prodding you to say, hey, yeah. try this other thing. But also how you spend money and like, do you buy yeah. an easel or do you use painter's tape and tape onto, oh, onto yeah. the wall, right? Oh, yeah. a lot of stuff's on the wall. Yeah. It, yeah. I started, uh, paint's expensive. Hmm. So... I've always tried to only buy a couple colors, mix a lot of my own. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of got some more. I used to start with only like four, but buying paint is so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's my favorite thing in the world to buy. Um, but it, So I try to like kind of keep costs like that low. Like My brushes are super old, mm. but they're still working and they're in good shape. Yeah. So. Yeah. Taking you, care of them is, like, really important so I don't have to buy new ones. You can go broke so, pretty Oh, my fast. gosh. It's so expensive. Yeah. The supplies and canvases I try to buy when there's a sale. Yeah. 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 I used to make my own, but I just don't have, like, my own wood chop I can use. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, cutting, kind of figuring out what I'm spending my money on is mm-hmm. try to track it. And, what ugh. do you... What, <laughs> that probably says okay. it all. Ugh. <laughs> <Hate it. laughs> More of that business side of it, right? Like, yes. just let me paint. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <sighs> well, uh, so what What do you, do you have any advice for people? And I know advice is like one mm. of those things where it's like, <laughs> oh, you can do this. And everyone's experience is oh, different, yeah. right? So yeah. a lot of times you can only talk to what, what works for us or what has worked for us. But maybe there's been some things that you've seen that, uh, that other people have done that you're like, oh, everybody, mm-hmm. prod, 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 like, sell your art a different way go teach go yeah uh, go on etsy go sell on instagram stories or don't buy that easel and tape something to the wall or look these all this advice you've already given yeah (laughs) you don't have to buy every color you can mix your own oh right like um a lot of that's around mindset right Mm -hmm. it's like it's thinking oh i have to buy all this well actually you can mix some actually you can put it on the wall and a lot of my uh, my questions in previous interviews have been around just this thing. How do you shift your mind from going mm-hmm. from uh, I need to buy all the colors to I can mix my own mm-hmm. to I need an easel so I can paint on the wall? How do you mm-hmm. how do you do that? I think a lot of it's not a great answer, but a lot of it is like just not having the money. Like I mm-hmm. I just can't afford to spend two hundred dollars on an easel. Yeah. And but this one was on sale. Ah. So. <laughs> 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 ah. <laughs> um. Yeah, it's a great answer. It's just it's trying to figure out how to save money mm-hmm. every way. Um, you don't like, like I use primary oils, and that's kind of the one thing I'm sticking, not giving up price wise. There's cheaper paints, acrylics are cheaper. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess if your advice, um, I would pick like something that you are. Not So, like, oils are, like, what I'm passionate about, and they're more expensive, but kind of keeping that, in, not integrity, but, like, that, like, happiness in me because I'm sticking with oils and splurging on certain paints and then supplementing that with, like, sales for canvases. Mm. Brushes I just take really good care of. I buy, like, really cheaper soap to clean them in. Um, that helps me feel like I'm not just, like, giving in to being 
broke and mm -hmm. like there's that kind of something in me like yeah I have what I love doing yeah I'll figure out other ways to make it work but like I'm still doing these rich creamy colors yeah it's like priorities, right? Priorities, like, yeah. that's the word. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. 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 So your, it's, your priorities, the, the oil, certainly. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And like, I'd love to paint big, but I know I can't always. Mm -hmm. So, but I'm still painting with the thing I love painting with. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's great. I hope that's good advice. Yeah. It's, all advice is good advice, <laughs> okay. right? Like, it's through the filter of our experiences. And, <laughs> okay. And it doesn't apply to everyone everywhere at yeah, all. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It, and I, I hope that uh, that advice from you and from other people I talk to and maybe from me putting these videos mm -hmm. together, that there's some some spark in someone's mind somewhere yeah. that they go, oh, that's right. I. I could, I don't have, I could paint it on the wall. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You definitely don't need all, like supplies is so fun to buy. Yeah. You don't need it. You can use acrylics and like draw on your sketchbook or whatever. Like if you can't afford to buy what you need at the time, like mm -hmm. still find a way to create. That's, that's advice I want to give. That's great. Yeah. I've like ran out of paint and I can't afford a $60 tube. Like a little tube. Mm -hmm. It makes me so mad. Um, so I won't paint for a while and I get grumpy. So it's just remembering I have my iPad and I draw on it, just mm -hmm. doing something. Just keep doing it. And then once you do have the money, you can buy paint and get back into painting. Yeah, I like that. Find a way to create. Just gotta be, you can use crayon and coloring, those like coloring books. I don't know. Yeah, no excuses. There's to, yeah, no excuses. there's so many ways to draw something. You could, you could go, you could literally go outside and pick up a rock. Yeah. And then like draw on a yes. sidewalk, right? You could do anything. <laughs> I mean, don't like vandalize yeah, yeah. yeah okay yeah but right <laughs> use safe judgment yeah, yeah. You can, everyone has a pencil and a piece of paper yeah just keep keep doing it over and over to like kind of feel that yeah and yeah. if you don't have a pencil you can like walk into most any bank or credit union and just ask them pencil. and they they'll they'll glad you gladly yeah. give you a pen with their name on the yeah. side of it right there you go yeah <laughs> so many tools out there uh well julie yeah. Those are all my questions. Oh, okay, um, is, did it. Yeah, yeah, there it <laughs> is. Yeah. Is there anything that maybe I missed that you wanted to include? Um, I just hope people really like my work. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I liked when I said <laughs> um, that it's not always about selling and stuff, which is really nice to make money. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate when that happens, but that's not why I paint and I just having that person like my thing and say you know I clicked with this mm -hmm. and I've been through what you were saying you've been through that is so much worth doing all this mm. even if I like have to eat PB and J's yeah for a week yeah which stinks <laughs> <laughs> well that's great thank you very much yeah thank Appreciate you it. I'm very introvert. I just kind of paint all day. Yeah. So I don't talk a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I, I uh, I'm learning more about introverts. My wife yeah. is an introvert, and she she has to teach me that uh, there's energy that comes from yeah. being alone. Yeah. <laughs> and not talking. And I'm the opposite. Where I get energy, yeah. I'm like, let's talk. All right, party. <laughs> um, so I I understand okay. a little bit more than I used to about introversion. Yeah.